I was crushed. I ran out the hospital, ran right out the hospital. All kind of stuff hooked. I mean, it didn't matter. I just ran out of there. I ran down the hall. My wife and my daughter following me, and I cried, cried like a baby for about 15 minutes. And after that 15 minutes, I got up off the ground and I said, "I'm all right." I said, "Okay, I got to fight now." That's all I knew then. I just still didn't know what kind of cancer I had. I just knew they found something, and I had to stay. And I didn't find that out for a few more, three or four more days later, that I had pancreatic cancer. I lost my mother at 15, you know. Then I went on, and my grandmother stayed with her for a good two, three more years, and then came to Detroit. My brother was here, and then from there, I got a job with a few different things. But after that, I met my wife. We was at a club that me and my brother went to. It's called Bobby G's. We met in there, and she asked me to dance, and I was a good guy, you know. I got up there and danced with her, and after that, we've been together ever since. Started our little family, six kids, 12 grandkids. It's, it's beautiful. He kept having pain in his stomach, and he started losing weight. And he um, was tired a lot. I knew something was wrong. And that's why, um, after he had his colonoscopy, I insist that we go back. When Mr. Hall presented, he had had some belly pain and he had this looked at by a couple of different physicians in other places. There wasn't a good answer for him. And it wasn't until he was transferred to Henry Ford where the imaging and biopsy was done that showed this was a pancreatic cancer. But it was a tumor that was big enough and around the arteries that a resection was not possible. There's gonna be instructions on how to breathe because the tumor actually moves as you breathe. And if you kind of hold your breath in the right position, it allows us to zap it without having chances of zapping something else. So it's one treatment a day for five days. So Monday through Friday. That's it. Okay. This is enough radiation that we don't think it'll grow back. Okay, gotcha. Um, even if we can't get an operation. But for somebody like you, we're always gonna be looking at that operation. So Dr. Okay. Kwan knows you're getting this, you know, the whole team's kind of together on okay. that. MR guided radiation is the use of a custom piece of equipment that integrates an MRI scanner with the radiation therapy machine. The ability of this machine to see things more precisely as well as to make changes when necessary means that we're much more pinpoint with the radiation and we can not only get that real dose that can take care of the tumor but avoid those doses that cause toxicity. Hi Mr. Hall, how are you doing today? was in one spot, it had not spread. And I said, let's do this, I, let's take it out. And then the doctors told me, no, it's not like, <laughs> you gotta go through chemo, you gotta go through this right here, and it's this process. We can't do surgery because it may spread on you and we don't wanna take that chance. It's steps we can take and you, you, you have a better chance of survival. And if radiation does what it's supposed to do, we'll see about surgery after that. He said, you're going to be all right. We can handle this. We can do this. And he, he gave me the motivation and made me think he could, he could do it. He said, my radiation is going to kill it. I'm going to kill it for you. And I was excited. I was very excited. Our goal was to have a strong local treatment and then maybe consider chemotherapy. And if we saw some sort of change, maybe surgery. But I told him surgery was going to be a home run. I wasn't sure if that tumor would be able to come off the artery enough to make a surgery safe. What about dilated pancreas duct? And then so that dilated duct points to the tumor. That's where it gets backed up at. Mm -hmm. Did you see where it splits? Can you like, see if it's maybe? Can you go in to see if it's a face or piece of gold? So it's no more than two thirds past 14 gray. Okay. Okay, Mr. Hall, please breathe out and hold. The important thing during his treatment was he was an active participant with us. We'd coach him to hold his breath in just the right spot so that the radiation was done perfectly. And 
and we would do these for each one of the radiation beams. He held his breath separately about 10 or 15 times over the course of each treatment. I'm all right, let me just say Mr. Hall, we're all set for you. All right, How are you doing today? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, good to see you. Ready to do it, ready to do it. All right, come on back. When I talk to patients about pancreatic cancer, I tell them it's kind of halfway between your belly button and your back. It's right in the middle of everything, stomach, duodenum, the rest of the small intestine, even your colon are all right there. We had to change the radiation dose to two, sometimes three of those structures from day to day to make sure that it was safe but still effective for his treatment. Do you want to take a peek at the kidneys? Breathe in, then breathe out, and then hold. When you're ready, go ahead and breathe out and hold. That's great, right there. Time to get all dressed up and ready to get out. Okay, sounds good. Uh -huh. the door for you. Okay. Thank you. Dad, you look great. Do I look great? Thank you. Thank and, he, you. and this is how he can. He drives home. Drive here. Yes, he does. I won't be sick I'm not going to sick at all. Yeah. Love yourself first and then follow your heart. Follow your heart, you know, because people going to talk to you, you know. Do what you need to do to make you happy to walk in this step. That's all I can tell you first. Get you to the team that you have around you means everything. The people you have around you means everything. If you got negativity around you, you're going to be misery loves company too, just like positive does. Okay, Dad, you look great. Great job, Mr. Hall. Way to hang in there. We have um, Kenneth Hall. He's a patient um, who presented with locally advanced pancreas cancer. This is follow-up imaging uh, for his study. It was noted to have some new findings. How did they explain this procedure to you? What did they say they're going to be doing today? They're taking it out. Everything taking the pancreas out. I think the fact that he did so well with the radiation and that on the imaging, things looked pretty stable. And Dr. Kwan thought, you know, with the help of the radiation, there might be more room to do a surgery. We have a great team lined up. It's, um, it's very, very serious, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, Dr. Preet got you. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most technically difficult operation, this operation would have been considered a 10 due to the surgery itself mixed in with the effects of the radiation treatment on our ability to dissect out the tumor as well as repairing a blood vessel that in the wrong hands could cause life-threatening bleeding. After the tumor is resected, uh, we have to put him back into a connected state, which requires us to create a new connection with the stomach, with the pancreas, and the bile duct. And if the tumor is located right here and it's kissing up onto the blood vessel, when we take it off, we know that the effects of radiation will actually kill the cancer cells right here. So as we peel it off, we actually have no cancer, residual cancer left. In his particular case, in Mr. Hall's particular case, the amount of work that he had done leading up to the operating room, the chemotherapy, the radiation therapy, in my mind was an investment towards better outcomes. And we're seeing some fantastic results. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I gotta hug you. <laughs> I'm fast shaking hands. Where I see the radiation and chemotherapy effects is how that tumor was not operable. It was too much attached to the blood vessels to do an operation safely. And that's what you know we had talked about when we first met downtown. Right. But we definitely have been seeing more and more with strong chemotherapy and this advanced MR guided radiation therapy that we can get these tumors out. And so the most important thing that we found in your resection is one, there were no lymph nodes that had cancer, so that's a big deal. Number two, 
that when the cancer was taken out, all the edges were clear. So it doesn't look like there was anything left there. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Take Thank care, guys. You. All Thank right, you. Then. And I told you, handshakes is not good enough for me. I got to hug you. Well, I got my hug. You gave right me now. back my husband. You. you gave me back my husband. Now, so don't you be you. calling me two months from now going, <laughs> can you take him back again? <laughs> I think if you're a physician who have a patient with a new diagnosis of cancer and are wondering what would be the importance of referring to a center that has MR-guided radiation therapy, Think about the three things. Could we make the dose more effective? Could we reduce toxicity? Could we shorten treatments? MR-guided radiation therapy can often do one or all three of those things. To see the changes that have occurred in the past decade is inspiring. I can't but help feel a renewed sense of hope. And I've never had that feeling before with these types of tumors. I just can't wait to see what the future holds. If I get done with all this, I want to go back to the hospital and start with all of those doctors and tell every last one of them face to face, thank you, and give them a hug. That's what I'm going to do first. Thank you and give them a hug. Everybody that I know had pancreatic cancer has died. I didn't want to leave right now. I wasn't ready for this. You know, I'm like, I've never been sick. You know, I always work every day and, and I looked at things I had to do and I, I just wasn't, I wasn't ready to go. I was not ready to go. He has a lot to live for. He has a wonderful life. He has a wonderful family. He has grandchildren. And most of all, he's got this wonderful woman. He's just madly in love with her. So why leave her? <laughs> <laughs> I really respect and love life right now with my family. I mean, you know, I promise tomorrow. And you better live every day to the fullest. Be happy. Be happy. Tomorrow is not promised to nobody.